Did, did it have to do with the Chinese dragon? It did have to do with oh, the Chinese okay. dragon. <laughs> I was wondering, if, are you sure that's what it was? Yes, I'm, yeah. All there right. were some other things, but I'd probably skip those. All right. Maybe. It was probably, probably one of the most embarrassing things I've done. But I am very mischievous and just fun-loving. Um, I think the boys, Logan, most of you have met Logan. He's 19. He's here with us. Um, my other son is 25. And anyway, when they, were, when they were younger, we went on a family vacation to uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. So if you know where Texas is, Arkansas sits up in the northwest, or excuse me, northeast corner. Um, and Hot Springs is exactly what it is. It's these hot springs that bubble up out of the ground. Anyway, when we were there, we were at the hotel. I don't even know what those things are called, but on the end of the bed, they had these... Ottoman. What was, no, it's not an ottoman. It was just a, like a half blanket that they put at the foot of the bed. What are those things called? The half blanket. Well... <laughs> that sounds there, good. That's a, probably a good description because that's what, I mean, I, it, they have no use other than, I guess, it, just for decoration. Well, this particular half blanket, or as you guys say, half blanket, y'all sound, <laughs> sound so cool, by the way. This half blanket looked like, it, like a Chinese, it had some sort of Chinese design on it or something. And I happened to be, I had just gotten out of the shower and all I had on was my skivvies and I put that uh, I put that thing over my head and I said look I'm a Chinese dragon and I went dancing around the room so anyway that was embarrassing and now he made me embarrass myself even more was that really it that was good was that the one it was good okay good not good yeah. enough because you know every time we got in the car you said can I drive yes, yes. Uh, you got made us really nervous because you wanted to drive and we haven't seen your driving skills. So how did you think you did when you finally got to drive my car? I thought I did great, except for parallel parking. So I did, have, I had to parallel park, and I, but I'm, I'm telling you, it, the street was curved, so there was no way, you can't curve a car, you can't curve it. So I, was, I did have the back tire on the curb a little bit, and he goes, you can't do that, you'll get a ticket. And I go, well, I couldn't get it on. So I moved, I took, I just went around one more time and came to a different one and got right in. And he says I had to take a cab to the curb. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not lying. I was this far from the curb. So to me, that's legal. Is that legal? Is that legal? Okay. It, was, it, wasn't, even, it wasn't even as big as the fish that I caught yesterday with Lee. So, <laughs> two fish. That was two you fish. Caught two two caught. fish. Yeah, they're about that. Yeah, Link can vouch for that, yeah. and Jeff. Uh, yeah. And sh did you, you eat them, them last night? You ate? Boom. You do? Oh, awesome. Well, I'm pained about that. <laughs> okay. Would you like to uh, sure. share? I'm going to pray. Sure. Father, we thank you for the joy of being one in Christ. Brothers and sisters, purchased forever. We enjoy being down here together, Lord, doing stuff for you, and, and yet we've got so much more to look forward to, an eternity in your presence. So, Father, we pray that something of the flavor of your life in Darren's life might bless us now as he shares with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Martin, is this a little hot or is it just me? I'm, I'm hearing a little feedback, but is it me or... There it is. That's, that's better. That's better. All right. Well, I need to start off by saying I'm not a preacher, okay? I'm, I'm a deacon at our church in North Fort Worth, and I teach 7th and 8th grade Sunday school. I, I, I've got 7th and 8th grade boys that I, uh, that I work with. So I'm going to pretend you guys are 7th and 8th grade boys and just, and just go with that. But it will help if you put your mind in you know, set your mind into a seventh and eighth grade boy, okay? Um, but let me tell you a little bit about me first, okay? Let me tell you how I came to faith, so maybe it will grant some validity to what, uh, what we're going to talk about. Um, I, uh, I grew up in a church home, so I didn't have, you know, a, a, a lot of, uh, 
of, of problems or things like that or didn't have a drug problem or, or you know, come from a, a rough home. My parents and their parents, and I didn't know my great grandparents, but I'm assuming and I think that my great grandparents were all followers of Christ. But uh, I had great, great examples at home. And uh, my mother, she was the church pianist. She played the piano. She was the church secretary. She was on, um, on Wednesday evenings in, in the States. We typically do a, uh, a supper and she was the cook. So um, basically you can say that if the doors were open to the church, we were there. Okay, um, sometimes we were going in kicking and screaming. You know, I'm the, I'm the youngest boy. I, there's three boys. I was the youngest of three. Um, and when I was nine years old, you know, you, I, I've grown up listening to all the stories. And that's one thing lovely about being a child. And I hope there's children over there right now learning all the Bible stories about Jesus. Because that is, it's so vital um, to kind of have a foundation of who this Jesus is that, uh, that we love and, and cherish and, and, and praise on, a, on every Sunday. So, but I learned, you know, I was learning the Bible stories, but the youngest of three, do you think I got picked on a little bit? Yeah, I was redheaded. They weren't redheaded. I was freckled. They weren't freckled. You know, I was basically the redheaded stepchild, but even though I wasn't a stepchild, but, um, and you know, what, when you, when boys fight, you tend to retaliate. And my mother would constantly, uh, you know, ramble off the, the, the golden rule, you know, do unto others as you want, you know, as you would have them do unto you. I heard that as do unto others as they did to you. <laughs> okay. So I would, you know, if my brother hit me by granny, I was going to hit him back. You know, um, but when I was uh, when I was nine years old, we uh, a, a traveling evangelist group came through and the back back in those days, you know, there was they, they, they traveled in pairs. The, there was a speaker, you know, the the preacher. And then there was the guy that led the music. Well, we um, housed the, the guy that was leading the music, the worship leader. And uh, so we, we chatted almost every night. If you can't already tell, I like to talk. So, but he and I chatted and um, he, I would say that he's the one that actually led me to Christ. Um, although uh, my Sunday school teacher at the time was really, I was having issues with the brothers, you know, fighting and stuff. And um, she's the one that made me realize what the golden rule really was. It was, you know, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. And that kind of changed me around. And not, not that that's what saves me, not, not doing good things, not being good, but, uh, but knowing that that's the way Jesus loves, that's the way I wanted to be, okay? I knew I was a sinner, you know, just because I knew even at nine that I had done things that I shouldn't do. And anyway, during one of the services, during this revival, I, went, I chose Jesus to be my savior. I went down and was actually baptized the, the, the next week. And that was one of my biggest fears, was, was actually being baptized. Um, at nine years old, I wasn't that great of a swimmer, and I was afraid to go into the water. So, I mean, that was one of the, the biggest the, the things that I worried about, was being baptized. I said, I gotta be dunked. But uh, I, I braved it out and did that. And I'll tell you right now, and if there's any new Christians Christ, people that are on the cusp of becoming a Christian, um, you know, baptism doesn't save you. It's, you know, it's the fact that you accept Christ in your life that saves you, okay? And you believe that he was risen. Do you see him on the cross right here? He's not on the cross, right? Because he's risen, all right? But um, Anyway, that, that is my story. And, and another thing for the newer Christians and, and soon-to-be Christians is that just because you're saved doesn't mean life is going to be grand. I will tell you how it's made a difference in my life and just as, as far as three years ago. What makes a difference is once you have Jesus, you have hope. Okay? You have a peace. 
and the hope, and this is why I wanted you to get in the mind frame of a seventh and eighth grade boy, because this is, this is ex the exact example I use for those guys when I talk about this hope. The hope that I'm talking about isn't the fact that I see a cute little seventh grade girl over there and I go, gosh, I hope she comes over and talks to me. You know, that's more like a wish, you know. I wish that girl would come talk to me. But the hope that I'm talking about that you have when you have Jesus is it's a guarantee. It is a guaranteed second life. We, we sang a birthday. We, one of our team members has a birthday on Tuesday. We sang happy birthday to her yesterday. And Ken, I never have heard that second verse before, but Ken taught us a second verse. When, you, when you're saved, you know, when, you be, when you're born again, like in John, when you're born again, you know, you get a second birthday. And that's, that's the hope. That's a guaranteed second birthday, okay? That is my story. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about is maybe a little different uh, uh, perspective on the Ten Commandments. Because I teach, I teach uh, you know, like, again, seventh and eighth grade boys. I was a boy at the, you know, where, you know, we were all young. Do we like to follow rules? You know, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that I see in the States and from what I've seen here, um, not particularly this church, but uh, we, you know, we've been around. We've been around all the neighborhoods. We've done some cookouts. And what I've noticed that about some of the kids is the lack of respect for not just other kids, but even adults. I was surprised as I'm flipping burgers that, you know, hearing curse words going, why can't I have that thing, you know? And I was just like, really? Okay. Well, the, you know, they don't want to follow rules. I mean, that's just, it's just in our nature that we don't necessarily want to follow rules. And I think that that's what a lot of um, non-Christians think Christians are, that all we have to do is follow rules. All right. I'm just going to tell you that we got to follow at least the Ten Commandments, right? So I want to give you a different perspective of the Ten Commandments. If Martin will put up there, if you want to get, turn to your Bibles in Matthew, it's Matthew 22 and uh, verses 34 through 40. And I'm going to tell you how this is the Ten Commandments. So basically what's going on in this particular story is Jesus has been preaching all over the place. The Pharisees and the teachers of the time are, you know, hearing stories of Jesus and they're asking him questions. They keep asking him questions to try and stump him. And this one smart Pharisee comes up to Jesus and, and um, actually ask him, he said, well, he goes, you know, I've, I've heard what you said out there. Um, you know, you, you, you seem to be saying the right things. But uh, he goes, I want to know. He goes, of, of all the commands, of the commandments, which one's the greatest one? And Jesus replied to the guy, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, yes. And then he said, you know, that's the first commandment. And then he said the second, he said, but there's a second. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And he goes on to say that all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. He calls it the two commandments, right? Um, all the law and the prophets. What is the law and the prophets? The law of the prophets is basically, at this time, the Old Testament. These Pharisees, they studied, they knew the Old Testament. You've heard the heritage of what's going on in, in Israel right now, in Jerusalem, and, and all that that's going over there. Their history, that is, it's history that is pointing to Jesus but these were the law. This is what the Pharisees studied. They knew this. They knew that, well, that's not a Ten Commandment. That's not, you know. But what I want you to do is take a, uh, take a look at um, the actual Ten Commandments. And we're going to show you that, yes, it is. The t this sums up the Ten Commandments. Love God, love others. And if we could uh, go ahead and put that up there. Um, if, you, if you go through the Ten Commandments, you've got... On one side, God, you've got do not worship any other gods. Do not make any idols. Do not misuse the name of God and keep the Sabbath day holy. All those reference God. 
I love God. Love God was the first commandment that Jesus said is the greatest. And then the second is love others. All right, if I'm loving others, I will honor my mother and father. I will not commit murder. I will not commit adultery. I will not steal. I will not lie and I will not covet. So these are all sins and, and really crimes against men, I guess. And that's, I mean, that is the, the, the Ten Commandments are summed up as Jesus did. And so, you know, this is a, you know, a perspective that I've given to my kids is that, you know, if you love God and love others and know that Jesus is the Christ, because that's different. I don't know if you know this or not, but um, the golden rule that I mentioned earlier, you know, do unto others as you would have people do to you, that's not just out of the Bible. Jesus didn't just say that. There are many different cultures have a various, you know, a, 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 ver a variety of a way of saying that, to love and respect. The difference is we have Jesus. They don't have the hope. You know, what is their salvation in the, you know, in all these other uh, religions or, um, you know, societies that, that have the, that same kind of value? They don't have Jesus, so they don't have that hope, okay? That, that, that hope of going to heaven. Um, and, and one way, uh, and, and you guys may have heard this as well, um, but I, I heard a story a long time ago of, um, you know, this holy man that uh, he, he was speaking with the Lord and he said, man, can I just get a glimpse of what heaven's going to be like? And he said, sure. You know, he was told, yes, yeah, we can do this. So they go into this great hall and there's two doors and they, they walk up to the doors and he chooses to, to go through the left door. So he opens the left door and what he sees in there is this big banquet table and this giant bowl of stew. And this stew, you know, you can just smell the aroma. I mean, it just smells so good. And, you know, so much so that, you know, his mouth is watering that he wants to, to uh, you know, to eat some. And, but what he notices is everybody around the table is all emaciated. They're all thin. And, and, and then he also notices that they've got this long wooden spoon strapped to their hand. And... He said, you know, I, I, I don't get this. He goes, I don't understand. He goes, let's, let's take a look at heaven. And so they, they leave that room and they go into the next room. And it's, it's almost identical in the, in the layout, the same table, the big bowl of stew, the same people or same looking people with um, the long wooden spoons on their hands. But the only difference is they're all happy and laughing and full, you know, probably as large as I am. Um, but he goes, okay, so, so what's the difference here, Lord? I don't, I don't get what's going on. And he said, well, you see, he said, in hell, everybody is just thinking for themselves and doing for themselves. But in heaven, what you will find is that they can, you, the spoon's long enough that you can reach into the stew, but you're not, you know, they weren't able to get this, the stew to their mouths in hell. So what was happening is I would get the stew out, I would serve you, okay? And then you would serve her. I mean, we, we kind of did that. I mean, I know I'm too large to go through this, but that's as yes, we were serving you. That is what it's about too. It's about loving God and loving others and serving God. This is, this is the gospel of Darren, serving God and serving others, okay? Um, I just, I, I have been blessed to come on this trip. I know we, we prayed earlier and, you know, they, they prayed that what a blessing it was for them that we are here. But I have truly, truly been blessed to be with this group, with, the, with Wales, with all the five churches that we've, we've been with. And we appreciate everything that you guys have done for us. And... Um, Anyway, I, I, I hope that this has given some, some perspective on, uh, on a way to love and serve because that's, I mean, it truly is what it's about. And, and, and Brother Ken said it earlier 
that you know, what you learn today, share tomorrow. If, if this is something new that you've learned today, share that with somebody tomorrow. Because that is also you know, one of Jesus' last things that he told us to do is go, he said, go and make disciples. So that's our, that's our job now. Now that we have Christ, go and make disciples. I want to finish my story and then I'll, I'll be done. I told you that I had this hope, you know, that when I became a Christian, I had this hope. And I want to tell you the difference because I know some of you out there, you're, you're probably thinking, well, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, but things are just not going my way. It's just, you know, you know, life's not fair. But if you have that hope and you give it to God, you know, if you, you pray and ask for it, you know, it, it, he, he does things that we don't even understand, okay? But he will give you that hope and that calmness. And where, where I'm going with this is three years ago, you know, I, I told you about my mother, you know, she, she was the best example. I mean, if, if you looked up, you know, Jesus, you know, in, in a dictionary, you know, you'd see the picture of Jesus that we see, you know, there. And then maybe the, the a second picture would be my mother, you know, if, if, if you needed, uh, you know, an example of uh, or a definition of a, another person that looked like Jesus, I would see my mother. Well, my mother, she taught Sunday school forever. Um, it's a funny story. She taught Sunday school. I was born in Roswell, New Mexico. If anybody's ever heard of Roswell, it's where the aliens landed. Well, she, she taught Sunday school for, for years and years there. Uh, we relocated to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. She picked up teaching um, Sunday school at, at our church there. And some kids came through. You know, she taught first grade. Some kids came through and she said, hmm, Sims. She goes, I knew, uh, you know, and saw that their parents was Phil Sims. She goes, I taught a Phil Sims when he was in first grade in New Mexico. And lo and behold, and the and, and United States is huge, y'all. It's big. Um, it happened to be that she was teaching kids of somebody that she taught in a completely different state in New Mexico. So, um, you know, things go around. But anyway, my mother is a saint. Anyway, three years ago, she had cancer, or actually four years ago, she, she got cancer, uh, intestinal cancer, and she got through it, went through the chemo, got all that done, and everything was looking pretty good. She'd go for scans, you know, for, for uh, actually a couple of years, she went through scans, and everything was fine. But then about three years ago, so this is probably five, about three years ago, she... Uh, she went for a scan and they detected it again. And this time she said, you know, I don't think I can go through chemo again. So she decided not to go through chemo again. And at the, about the same time that she was diagnosed um, with cancer, my son, who, the, my oldest son and his wife announced that they were pregnant. And we were just going, wow, you know, this, how cool is this gonna be? I'm gonna be a grandpa. Well. And, you know, mom, you know, decided not to do her chemo. And you, we could see her just slowly declining. Well, she passed in December of 11. And, uh, but, you know, and, you know, I was pretty devastated. But, uh, you know, if I didn't have the hope, if I didn't, you know, if I wasn't on, you know, this side of the cross where Jesus is over here, I'm on this side of the cross you know, if I did not have that hope, it'd be easy for me to go over on this side and just be mad as heck that, that mom passed away. Um, and then I was tested even further because two weeks later, my son and his wife lost the baby. So I was like, oh, come on, God, really? But again, uh, I sat down and, and prayed and I said, you know what? You're right, it's your timing. It's not mine, it's your plan, not mine. But that's why if you don't have that hope, it is so easy to, to go the other way. So that's why I wanna encourage you that if you're new, if you're about to be there, it's, it's worth it because if you don't have the hope, what else is there? So just you know, keep the faith and, and have that hope. And I'm telling you, if you pray, take it to the Lord, he's gonna give you 
a peace. I mean, so much. You're just going to, you know, just where you can just breathe. So anyway, if you'll let me pray for you guys, um, I would, uh, I'll just end with that. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for letting me be here, for sending me across the Atlantic Ocean to meet these wonderful, wonderful people in this wonderful country. Lord, I just, uh, I've, I've said it many times as, as I'm here, is that I just, you know, pray that you reveal yourself to them, that you send the Holy Spirit just to fill every nook and cranny, every home, every street, every child, just, just fill them that they become dumbfounded. They don't have a clue what is going on, but they realize then it's you. Lord, I want them to have that same hope. I want them to have a second birthday. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We, and yes, we will mess up. So do forgive us when we fail you. All these things we ask are in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus came for men and women who have empty eyes, who've lost hope. Thank you for helping me to hear that today. But dear God, in my 